Hi, and thank you for watching the fifth video in the series of God's Roadmap to the End. I've had to interrupt the work that I was busy with on the second part of Daniel's 70th week, as there are only a few days remaining before the start of the celestial conception of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo at the time when I posted this video. There are very specific prophecies connected to the Revelation 12 sign that God has revealed to me over the past few days that I believe He wants me to present to you. These are extremely important in establishing the reliability of God's unfailing word, the Bible, proving that it contains information about yet future times and accurately predicting specific events before they occur on the dates that are assigned to them. This should seriously affect the way in which every person approaches this supernatural book, as it contains many prophecies about the worst time ever that will soon be upon the earth. It should also raise some questions in the minds of those who believe that the universe and life came about as a result of evolution. My hope is that by proving that God's word accurately predicts events before they occur, specifically looking at the trigger event that will initiate the period known as the beginning of sorrows, some people's understanding would be open to the truth that God has revealed to those whom he has chosen to be part of his family before time runs out. Jesus said that in the entire volume of the book it is written of him, and that heaven and earth would pass away, but that his word would not, until everything that is written therein is fulfilled. God also positions his word above his name, and I believe that God would never give a prediction in his word that he clearly marks by a celestial marker that would not be fulfilled as he stated. So let us consider what God's Word tells us about the events around the start of the period known as the beginning of sorrows, as described by Jesus in Matthew 24. At the time when I did part 3 in the series of God's Roadmap to the End, that specifically focused on the period marked by the celestial pregnancy, this information was not yet revealed to me. I believe God's Word clearly shows us how the events that will start the beginning of sorrows and that is associated with the heavenly conception of Jupiter within the womb of Virgo will play out. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, you are welcome to do so as they will provide specific background information on what will be discussed here today. They are linked in the section below. When we analyze the information provided in Stellarium, a free astronomy software application that you can download and install if you would like to study this for yourself, we see from Israel's position on the globe that the conception of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo occurs on November 20th, 2016. It is important that Israel's position is used as this prophecy specifically concerns God's chosen nation. The birth occurs on September 9, 2017, and the final alignment as described in Revelation 12 verse 1 occurs on September 23, 2017. Our Creator exists outside of our space-time continuum and His dimensionality is beyond what we are confined to. When He created the heavens and the earth, and when He set the stars and planets in motion, He had in view before Him how Stellarium would be used to discover the celestial alignment that he designed and described in Revelation 12 verse 1. We also see in Revelation 1 verse 1 that this information was given by God to Jesus to show unto his servants concerning the timing of these events. More about this later. The design of God's word is so intricate and delicate consisting of multiple layers that are interconnected and integrated that it is astonishing to realize that the addition or the omission of one letter to this book will remove the supernatural authentication that is observed in its design. This is similar to finding the authentication marks in a currency that we use to buy and sell. It is then no surprise that the name of the software that would one day be used to discover the Revelation 12 sign would also be incorporated into the design of this book. Sean Mitchell, who is a Bible code researcher, has discovered a number of matrices that include the software's name, and it is striking to see how many codes are found in the vicinity of the search term, confirming the application of the software and linking it to the celestial bodies that act as heavenly signals. You can link to Sean's Facebook page, which I have added in the section below, and see more of the work that he is doing there. 
When we understand that God designed His Word before the foundation of heaven and earth, and discovering that Stellarium is woven into the design of the Bible, it changes our perspective of how to approach the period that is right before us, making use of the software and also incorporating what is prophesied in the Word of God. The search term of Stellarium is surrounded by terms that are associated with the events right before us, and we can be sure that God then also designed the universe in such a way that we can apply the software to accurately view the timing of these events that are displayed on the hands of God's heavenly timepiece. Through this software application we can discover exactly when specific events that are prophesied in His Word will occur. You may argue that this approach is a classic example of date setting, and I fully agree with you that it is. However, the difference between this case and all the others that got it wrong in the past is that in this situation we have to do with very specific prophecies in the Bible that are clearly linked to a very unique celestial sign. And this confirms God's purpose for the celestial bodies as seen in Genesis 1 verse 14. These celestial alignments that are then described in the Word of God show us clearly the dates on which the associated prophecies are said to be fulfilled. I believe that as we continue, you will see that the accuracy is just too exact to make these coincidences. So what does God's Word then reveal to us about the events that relate to the celestial conception of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo on November 20th of 2016? One passage that specifically relates to this time is found in Isaiah 21. Let's have a look at what is written. The burden of the desert of the sea, as whirlwinds in the south sea pass through, so it cometh from the desert from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me, the treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, all the signs thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain, pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it, I was dismayed at the seeing of it. My heart panted, fearfulness affrighted me, the night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed, and he cried, A lion! My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. O my threshing, and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. This passage is packed with information regarding the time right before us. We see Isaiah being given a grievous vision concerning Elam and Media, which is modern-day Iran. In this vision, Iran is then called to besiege or to attack. This attack is described as occurring in a treacherous or underhanded way that will most likely catch their target by surprise or off guard, and it is also possible that they may be attacking their target through a proxy. Next, we see these events being linked to a woman in travail with the birth pangs being described as a result of this attack. This aspect of this prophecy specifically assigns the events that are described to the start of the period that is physically marked by the sign of Revelation 12. Jesus provides more information surrounding this time that is represented by this pregnancy in Matthew 24, which is called the beginning of sorrows. And finally, we find this passage then also connected to the very first prophecy given in Genesis 3 verse 16 where the woman was told that her conception and sorrows would be multiplied. All of these passages are prophetic descriptions that point to the same period before us. 
where the timing of specific events that form part of the celestial pregnancy is signaled by God's heavenly timepiece. We discover additional specifics on exactly where this event that is described in Isaiah 21 fits into the timeline depicted by the celestial pregnancy in a very surprising discovery that I would like to thank my Facebook friend Sharon for. She pointed this out to me. There are two predominant translations of verse 4 in the passage from Hebrew into English and this is what the two translations basically convey. The first is seen in the passage as shown in the King James Version and here we see Isaiah mentioning the night of my pleasure that is turned unto fear. The second I have taken from the English Standard Version and it reads as follows. My heart staggers. Horror has appalled me. The twilight I longed for has been turned for me into trembling. I think you will agree with me that the meanings of these two translations are quite different, taken at face value. But when we see how they are linked to each other through Stellarium, it is truly amazing. Let me show you what I mean. Considering the verse as translated by the King James Version, keeping in mind that we are looking at events surrounding the pregnancy of a woman, the night of my pleasure would point to the start of this period of time, as conception is normally associated with a night of pleasure. If we now look at Stellarium, we see that Jupiter enters the womb of Virgo on November 20th of 2016. This would be seen as the heavenly conception, marking the start of this period known as the beginning of sorrows, and also the night of my pleasure that is associated with conception. Considering the second translation, we see mention of a longing for twilight, pointing to a specific time of day and not so much to an activity that would be associated with conception. When we look at the time at which twilight occurs, from Jerusalem's perspective, we see that on November 20th, twilight starts at 4.37 p.m. and lasts until 6.02 p.m. Going back into Stellarium, looking at this time specifically, we see that the conception of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo occurs exactly during twilight. At the start of twilight, Jupiter's center point is outside the line it needs to cross to enter the womb of Virgo. At the end of twilight, Jupiter's center has moved across this line. The accuracy with which the heavenly activity matches the information provided in this prophecy in the book of Isaiah from Jerusalem's perspective is far too great to be a coincidence. We also have two translations of the same verse that accurately point to the timing and the activity that is depicted in the celestial alignment and that is linked to this prophecy. Both the conception and the timing of the conception is accurately given in two translations and confirmed within Stellarium. This links the attack on Israel to the conception of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo and shows us that it will happen around twilight. The precision of this heavenly alignment to this prophecy is astounding when we keep in mind that the information was written thousands of years ago, when only God knew the day and the hour at which this event would occur. Not only has God provided this prophecy, but He has guided the translators of the verse from Hebrew to English to capture two aspects that would seem to be unrelated in the absence of the heavenly sign and tying them together within a software application that we can use to view this heavenly sign. God has also designed the cosmos in such a way that it would mark this specific point in time so that it would be clear to everybody evaluating this information to see who is really in control here. If we understand what God's word is showing us then, this clearly indicates that Iran, or a proxy of Iran, will launch an attack against Israel after sundown on November 20th, 2016. What is further very interesting about this passage is that we see a chariot of horsemen that follows the description of this event. We find a very similar pattern in Zechariah 5 and 6 where we see a vision described to Zechariah that is then immediately followed by a chariot of horsemen. This is what we read in a passage from Zechariah. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. 
He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established, and set there upon her own base. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot black horses, and in the third chariot white horses, and in the fourth chariot grizzled and bay horses. This passage starts off by describing a container encapsulating wickedness. The woman that is mentioned inside of the container is most likely a mistranslation from Hebrew into English, as the Hebrew word used for woman is written in the same way as fire offering, which would fit the situation better in describing a weapon, in my opinion. The fact that this container is said to be covered with a lead lid, and that it contains wickedness, would also point to the possibility that radioactivity could be involved with the contents of this container. Notice also how the angel describes the form of this object to Zechariah and says that this form is used throughout the earth. Considering the contents of this container, this would then paint an accurate ancient image of a missile. Missiles are used all over the earth and they all have the same form and carry fire to their destination. This object is then carried to the land of Shinar, which is an area of land that would be situated directly west of Iran in current day Iraq, from where it would most likely be launched against Israel. Given that there are horsemen that follow both visions in the same manner, we obtain a recognizable pattern that links these two events together. Zechariah's vision describes the weapon used during the attack, and Isaiah 21 describes the situation from Israel's perspective, looking on in fear as this weapon is detonated. In the very first verse of Isaiah's prophecy, we see him describing a whirlwind. When we consider an image of a whirlwind, we normally see something that looks like this. From Isaiah's perspective, he was most likely providing a description of something that he could identify in his time that represented what he saw. If Isaiah saw the following image, would he not describe its form as being that of a whirlwind as well? The chariots of horsemen in both these prophecies are also linked to the four horsemen of the Apocalypse and associated to the events described by Jesus when he spoke about the beginning of sorrows. It is very interesting when we continue reading in Zechariah to see that when these chariots first appear, the red horses representing war do not move away into other countries as the other three colors do, which would indicate that the majority of this war would be confined to the Middle East and would be focused on Israel's destruction. To summarize then, God's word predicts a war that will start by Iran or a proxy under Iran's command attacking Israel after sundown on November 20th of 2016, if we accept that God's word is to be understood in a literal sense. We can clearly see that the universe was designed by him to act as a timepiece to accurately signal this important prophecy's fulfillment. He knew that stellarium would be used to view these alignments when he created the heavens and the earth. It is also evident that he set the stars and planets in motion to signal the fulfillment of yet future prophecies that can be observed through a software application known as stellarium. In addition to this, we see the following passage in Isaiah 21 that basically repeats what we read in Revelation 1 verse 1. And this has to do with God's revelation of information concerning the timing of events that He has shared with those who are His servants. 
These two passages convey to us that God has given His Church the privilege of knowing the specific timing of major events that were hidden by God in His Word and to be revealed in the time that we live in now. He connected these prophecies to heavenly signals that act as the hands on a timepiece, signaling specific dates during this gestation period. This starts off by the conception on which Iran will attack Israel, starting the beginning of sorrows. This is then followed by Israel's sorrows intensifying over nine months until the birth of Jupiter from Virgo occurs, when great and fearful signs in the heavens are given when Jupiter collides with Nibiru. Finally, we have the final alignment on September 23rd of 2017, as given in Revelation 12 verse 1, that represents the glorious departure of those from earth, who eagerly awaits the return of their bridegroom, having the oil of gladness, and knowing that our God is not a God that judges the righteous with the wicked. Thank you for watching. If you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and look forward to our unification unto Him in the clouds, I hope that this message will encourage you to know that the time that we have left on earth is soon coming to an end. If you do not look forward to meeting the Lord in the air before He begins His judgment of the earth, or have not accepted His free gift of salvation, there is still time for you to do so and to become part of His family by accepting the salvation that He freely offers to anybody who would accept. If you would like to do so now, you can invite Him into your life today by praying the following prayer and asking the Lord Jesus to reveal Himself to you. Heavenly Father, I know that you are real and that your word is true. Your word also states that you love me so much that you have given your life in exchange for my salvation from the judgment that I deserve. I know that I am guilty and that my life is full of sin. I am lost without your saving grace and I know that I can do nothing to earn my own salvation. Please forgive me for not recognizing you, for not obeying you, for not loving you with all of my heart, or my neighbor as myself. I repent today from my old life. I turn my back on it and I walk away from it. Please cleanse me from all my sins through the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today I choose an intimate relationship with you. Lord Jesus, I have heard your voice and I open the door of my heart to you. Please come into my life and make me a new creation according to your word. Please fill me now with your Holy Spirit so that I can love you back and live the life that you have created me to live in the short time that remains. Help me also to live my life so that I can be pleasing in your eyes and give to me the oil of gladness so that I can look forward to meeting you in the clouds when you come to fetch us for the wedding. Thank you for your grace and love and keep me until you return to establish your kingdom on earth. This I pray in the name of, above all names, Jesus Christ, and I thank you for now coming into my life. Please use me in your kingdom from this day forward. Amen.